Hello everyone and welcome to A What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined as ever by the man who plays everything, Scott Tilford, Hi. because he's here to break my heart. Over the weekend, <laughs> some news happened about Bully Team. Yeah. I know, we're all very excited for it, but... Not anymore. You know, not anymore. Dreams crushed. Scott, what's happened? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it came out that uh, this website called Video Game Chronicle um, found out, they talked to some insiders, some anonymous sources um, that have since been confirmed or whatever, that Bully 2 was in development as early as 2008. That was apparently when the script was finished, the initial script and um, that was going to deal with Jimmy Hopkins going back to his stepdad's house um, and they, apparently he was going to stay there across the summer and then they didn't know where they, um, where they were going to go sort of after that, whether he was going to return to education or whether he was going to go to college or whatever. But the interesting thing for me is that if you've been following the Bully 2 uh, leaks over the years, um, there was a whole bunch of artwork that came out in around about 2013, 2014, um, kind of like a cartoony art style, but they showed a, a Jimmy Hopkins looking ginger man yeah. um, standing on the edge of like a street corner and there were some various other pieces of artwork that um, had like graffiti relating to Jimmy's dad and stuff like that so it seems like all that artwork was initially true um, and the Bully 2 was in production They had, apparently they had it playable um, between 2010 and 2013 they had a build that was playable um, but according to the uh, the sources it just fizzled out they said that they couldn't get it off the ground they couldn't get like well assumedly they couldn't bring it all together yeah. um, it's very scarce comments that came from the report itself but According to them, um, yeah, the game was playable between 2010 and 2013, but we also know that that was when Red Dead kicked off, mm -hmm. and they had GTA V, and they had Max Payne 3, and nearly all those things carried forward, apart from Bully. Yeah, I mean, that's the big sort of differentiation there for me. Mm. Like, the Rockstar of 2008, even up to 2013, is very different from the Rockstar that we have to now. They are way less prolific than mm. they used to, way more projects. Like, even Red Dead Redemption 2, which took so many years to make, that mm. was a collaboration between all the different Rockstar studios, so it makes sense that they wouldn't have had time to, you know, work or perfect anything else. Mm -hmm. This still sucks though, even though I'm been trying to pass it out in my head this morning because I do think it kind of makes sense. Ever since these rumors started, you know, mm. gaining some momentum, we've always been kind of wondering how you would even do Bully 2. The original yes. was such a kind of snapshot zeitgeisty thing, and it took a lot of backlash about, you know, I mean, the title was literally Bully, mm -hmm. and it's hard to, you know, get around that. We were wondering how you could even do that in 2019. Mm -hmm. What story could you go? Would it? Would you make it kind of more mature? Would you like dive into some interesting deep themes, or would you keep it arcadey and fun and mm -hmm. irre irrelevant? It seems like they kind of run into those same issues during Maybe. development when it comes to the story. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the stuff that leaked, like I said, there was that one piece of graffiti where it showed like it was like a, a guy in like a dress and it was like, oh, Jimmy's dad or whatever. And I was like, well, maybe you're going to try and approach some more LGBT, like, um, you know, subject matter and do that sort of thing about like the immature approach to, you know, like gender roles and whatever. Maybe there was a way to go that I kind of trust a new age rock star to do. Like if you look at Red Dead 2 storyline, they're way more mature as a studio mm. than they were back in the likes of GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas. Like I love those games, but they're completely different tones. And um, Red Dead 2 is like a way more grounded, like, you know, way more sort of nuanced tale about like an individual sort of realizing who they are and whether they can do good and what is justice and all that sort of purpose and everything else. Um, I would trust them way more these days. Yeah. Um, but it's also strange because, you know, like this, like I said, they initially finalized the script or at least had a good chunk of it back in 2008. Um, but the graphic style that seemed to be in the concept art was way more cartoony. Um, and I wondered whether they were going more down that route to let them sort of delve into like the same subject matter of, you know, like uh, child violence or things that would happen in the school because with a more realistic rendering techniques or more realistic graphics you're gonna have way more backlash yeah because you're literally controlling potentially like controlling a realistic depiction of a teacher being assaulted or children fighting or whatever i don't know which if that's is, the only way you could do it which but, is uh, a yeah. you know that's that's not what i would have wanted from mm. a bully too like that kind of approach because i do think you know we as kind of players and gamers or whatever think of rockstar as a very different studio mm. now like you said they've matured a lot even even if you still have you know the humor in gta 5 you still mm -hmm. have that kind of button pushing uh, sort of element. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is them kind of trying to tell more mature stories or them trying to tell or, you know, realize more three-dimensional characters mm -hmm. in that. I, 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 don't, I don't know whether that's good or bad because I love the <laughs> games that they've made. Uh -huh. Rust, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of my favorite games of the entire generation, potentially even ever, Scott Ooh, Taylor. It's pretty I good. love it so much but at the same time it's kind of there's there's no space anymore for them to do these kind of wacky things there's no space for them to do you know pinball you know, <laughs> pinball and um, what's the other one ping pong bowling ping pong what, why is rockstar's you... ping pong that's <laughs> it remember that that's I what i was getting a ping pong mini game I was no like... no 
No, Rockstar's that was, ping pong. You that know, was no, projects that, like that. That was Rockstar's table tennis, but I know what you mean. Um, that's that's this thing though. Like they kind of have these two wings to what Rockstar are because they've always had um, the you know, social commentary stuff that was always baked in really dark humor and macabre humor and slapstick stuff and almost like South Park adjacent uh, lampooning of like Western society and Western tropes in America and the American dream. And obviously that came from them being a, initially a studio just in Scotland and being able to have that sort of distanced approach to uh, you know like American life or the, the the media's interpretation of American life. Yeah, and then that gave them so much stuff to play with but for me GTA 5 was the zenith of that was like was them pushing that to the absolute extreme and being like okay we've really exhausted this material and like for me GTA 5 is like is a hell of an accomplishment but I found it a bit tired like I thought yeah. they didn't have much to say anymore um, whereas like something like Vice City was a nice lampoon of 80s America or 80s media or whatever um, and it's like going forward I like see the shift they try to do in GTA 4 that didn't stick but I see them absolutely nailing it in Red Dead 2 yes. and so even though Red Dead 2 was a little bit divisive in terms of its pacing and stuff like the stuff that it doubled down on and the things that it like was absolutely determined to do in terms of its indulgences it was so confident in that stuff so I think if you I don't know retroactive if you apply that to like a bully mold then it would yeah. be way more about what it's like being someone growing up in high school and yes. finding themselves and like there's a way to do it that would have been mature as hell but like it depends what sort of which identity you want from Rockstar whether you want the old school stuff or maybe the more nuanced new stuff yeah it makes me wonder what they're going to do like sort of going forward because obviously Red Dead Redemption is a huge thing Grand mm. Theft Auto is obviously goes without saying the biggest thing of all time. I wonder, is it literally the biggest thing ever? I think it might it? be, you know. I mean, yeah. we, we did a very inflammatory video a while back that you titled that was said it was bigger than literally everything <laughs> in the entire world. Bigger than Jesus. You, you went the Beatles route and did, did. that thing. Yeah, obviously, GTA is very, very big. So mm -hmm. I don't know where they go from here. Do they dip back into the old franchises that have been like lying dormant? Do they revisit Bully? Do they revisit Max Payne? Mm -hmm. Or do they do something new? Because that kind of feels to me, the less incongruous route to go down. Because mm -hmm. when you do go back to these older franchises, yes, they could do a more mature take on them, but would that split the fan base? Is that what they would want to do? Sort of pigeonhole their new kind of take in prior you know, IP, or would they want to sort of take that and apply it to something brand new? Mm -hmm. Because I, I imagine sort of the next big thing from kind of Rockstar, the next a new, new, IP. new IP, that would be huge. Mm -hmm. It'd be probably less bankable, but I imagine if anyone can sort of take a risk on a new creative project that no one knows about mm -hmm. it's rock star well it's, it's weird because I think like agent was obviously like was trademarked ages ago like years and years ago and they never really did anything with that it occasionally came out that they were still working on it and then it was ended up uh, scuttled or whatever but that was like a stealth IP that was kind of set in like a cold war yeah and there was a whole bunch of stuff with that but they didn't do anything with it um, and I think in the end they didn't renew the trademark which sort of like you know showed that ultimately they weren't gonna do anything with it um, but yeah I would I would take a new IP but I also think it's interesting with bully because that's next to manhunt is arguably their most notorious game yeah um, and was so wrongly labeled across the 2000s as this game that would encourage child violence and would encourage bullying and everything else. But Jimmy Hopkins was very much the victim of bullying himself and was just trying to find a place amongst a whole bunch, uh, you know, a very variety of cliques across high school. Um, anyway, you could choose to be a bully if you want. It was mm -hmm. about as much G GTA that was in bully as that if you want to, you know, give kids swirlies and lock and put them in lockers, yeah. you could. But you were also the on the receiving end of that, um, which I thought was fascinating. And like, I think there's more to do with that because there's so much um, untapped potential for what it's like growing up in a high school, all the societal pressures of trying to find yourself and everything else. Yeah. It would take a hell of a script, but I think there would be a way to do that. I, I agree, and I guess I, I can see why they sort of ran into that problem. They they mentioned they had sort of this script done in 2008, but they they literally just got to the point of, oh, Jimmy kind of goes back to his stepfather's house, mm -hmm. and they didn't even know whether he was even going to go back to school. I know. So that might have been interesting. That would have been really rich sort of material, in my opinion, to mine, that mm -hmm. kind of post-school reality where you've got yes. away from like those cliques, you've got away from that kind of childhood mentality and then you're just sort of going what now? Well, it's, <laughs> what it's do a, I do now? It's a weird parallel, but something like Catherine, which like I only played because of the full body edition, that is very much about that like mid twenties sort of um, period where you're you're finding yourself and you're maybe going to university and you're sort of like delving more into I don't know everything ranging from different philosophies or mm. like different lifestyle choices and whatever, and you're really truly finding yourself. Like that can be just as um, you know it's just just as much of a, a maturation period as your teenage years. Um, certainly was for me, and so like I think that there's more there's like there's enough material there that like that mid twenties period is like. I said it's so untapped like something like Catherine delves into it from like a relationship standpoint and who should you be with and what's it like you know realizing that you need to set up a family and who you love and whatever um but like the the more mischievous side of it that yeah. like bully sort of played in it was very like sort of um you know like oh, oh you like with a slingshot and like you know old school english comic type very, stuff. like sort of well like, yeah you know and dandy and whatever Bart simpson's the one that always comes to mind yeah me. yeah for like an american um like equivalent kind of thing and it's just like yeah i, was, I would be interested to see just what they do like i said they've clearly matured as a studio i kind of think of them the 
same way as Naughty Dog, um, mm -hmm. where they, you know, they started out doing like, not that Naughty Dog's old stuff was immature, but it was more easy access, it was more cartoony. Yeah, yeah. But you can trust that with The Last of Us, and they've very much, they've grown up like so much, and they have way more to say. Um, with Rockstar, it's just, I, I wonder if they'd ever go back to that old school mentality again, yeah. or whether it just feels like it's done. Like, would you even want like an old school Rockstar game? I, now? I don't know if I would, I, I, would, I think that might be a little bit sort of aggressive on their part, mm. because they have sort of grown so much, and the thing I love about sort of Rockstar's games now is just sort of the worlds, like live yeah. in those worlds. I know, I always say this, but I know some of the streets in GTA 5 better than I know the streets <laughs> of my hometown. Like, I love that sort of element of their kind of, you know, games, mm -hmm. that, that they're the only studio to really have the money and resources to put all of this time and effort and detail into the little details, mm -hmm. you know? No other open world is sort of, is packed with sort of intricate little, you know... Like, it feels like you live in it. Th yeah, it feels yeah. like you live in it. Like, those unique interactions. And I don't think you'd get that from Bully. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what they're defining themselves on now. Mm -hmm. They've moved away from that kind of, you know naughtiness as it were it that is, was yeah. present in all of their older games for something like you said more mature but also more kind of technologically rich mm -hmm. in what from the details that were in this kind of report and bully the idea was that it was going to be a kind of not even semi-open world you just sort of had an open world like, elements. Like, a, like a chunk of like where his dad's house was but then you would also go back to somewhere like Bullworth or a different like yeah. uh, university or whatever um, but that's another thing it's like Rockstar's bread and butter are these massive open world clockwork mechanism environments um, which you would get on a smaller scale but Red Dead 2 was like one of the biggest versions of that with little pockets of like specific interactions if you went into um, what the hell was the name of that first town that you go into Valentine Val Valentine, um, everybody who first went into Valentine, we all got the same animation, even though it feels like you're just happening upon things happening. Yeah. Um, they sort of like coded it in a way that, you know, you, you see someone moving a piece of wood or putting a sign up or whatever. Um, they kind of found a way to hybridize the two, but I, if they, like, you know, download that stuff back, it's like, well, you know, their signature elements wouldn't necessarily be in there anymore. It wouldn't be this massive open world thing. It would be a more focused experience. For me, that's why I adore Bully. Even yeah. though it has the, the tag on of you can go and explore Bull with if you want. It's nowhere near as like open plan as Red Dead or GTA or yeah. whatever. I would like a more focused Rockstar kind of thing? I, 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 I partly agree. I think Rockstar is in a really fascinating position mm. now in general. I'm really excited to see what their next move is because they've had two absolutely world-conquering games mm -hmm. in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 that have moved them, even though they're in the same franchises, so far away from what they used to do. Mm. And now if every single game from them has to be this mammoth 25 million <laughs> copy selling hit, mm -hmm. I don't know whether that even leaves them space to experiment with stuff like Bully again. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know whether they could go back to that um, sort of place they were in in like the late 2000s purely out of you know financial pressures I don't know if they've got maybe that I think if it's like I said with them and Naughty Dog they're one of some of the only studios that have the cloud I mean Rockstar are a publisher as well as a developer so yeah. they can kind of just like step back and be like okay what do we want to do um, but like you said they have such massive team sizes that either they'd have to work on a handful of different projects or the vast majority of them do get funneled into some other mammoth thing um, but yeah the way the Bully 2 sort of rolled out it seems like they were going to go ahead with it like we always hoped and assumed that they would um, but it fizzled out for whatever reason whether that's something like GTA Online coming into the fore and they needed more resources on that, which Charles Zelnick has talked about that they ended up putting way more time into that than they initially thought of, um, or whether just they didn't see the, the viability of something like Bully in the current climate, whether it just doesn't fit anymore. But whatever, let us know what you think down in the comments below of a potential Bully 2 and how you would do it in the current climate and what you'd want to see from the future of Jimmy Hopkins. For now though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Got him bunged up. Oh, Sam. <laughs>